the site's got a slight slope. This is exaggerated, that's what it's really like. Hey, I'm Josh, and today's video is all about sloping sites. Stick around for my top three tips for building on sloping sites. I think the first thing we need to establish is that a sloping site is obviously more difficult than building on a nice flat site. You've seen some of the flat sites we're building on where you can just drive up, jump out of the ute and walk on. Whereas as soon as there's a gradient, even if it's a gentle one, it starts to add implications. You want your building to be flat and whether the slope's like this or like this, you're going to need to resolve that difference one way or another. So there's issues like access, retaining walls, cut and fill, the weather, yeah, we can deal with the weather and rain and puddles on a flat site, but as soon as you've got that slope, it just gets harder. Getting materials from A to B. And so as you can imagine, all these things start to add more time, more hassle, and therefore more cost. But don't worry, I've tackled a few sloping sites now, and I've got a couple of tips about how you can minimize the impact that those sites have, or how you can make the most of your sloping site. Tip number one, you gotta get a good designer on board and that good designer needs a good survey. You need a good topographical survey that shows you the exact lay of the land. Now one of the ways that you're gonna get a really good survey is you're gonna make sure that the majority of your build platform and your access is free from vegetation. There's been a bit of action on site this week. Over the weekend we've been doing some tree work. That's so that when they come along with their GPS surveyor, they can actually get accurate results. That's the point I put in just now. That's the, uh, the front face there, so it's two meters off that. This one measures the vertical and horizontal angles. and then that topographical survey will give us the lay of the land that gets put in the designer's computer and then the designer will load up the lay of the land and the house and we can start to work together to move things around and manipulate the design. Uh, you're obviously enjoying these tips and I'm going to save the best for last so before you go ahead and watch that go and click the subscribe button. Tip number two which is to work with the land opposed to fighting it. By that I mean you want to look at, like, if this is how your land's going, there'll be a natural way to do a cut and a wall and a fill, and each site's different depending on where the view is, where the access is. So different sites require different work, and this one is unique. Over there we have had to install a 1.4 metre retaining wall, and on this side of the front face we have a 1.4 metre block wall. But that's where you work with your designer. You get that accurate information into the computer and then you work through like, if we design it like this, we're gonna to have to put a gnarly retaining wall here. But if we move it over here and do a cut and a fill, we're gonna be able to minimize some of that impact. This is actually the part of taking on the section nobody wanted that I really enjoyed and put a lot of effort into. And this is where some of my learnings over the years of working on multiple sloping sites comes into play. One thing that people underestimate is the time and energy it takes to come up with that design. And that leads into tip number three, which is to keep everybody in the loop from the builder, the designer, the council. At the end of the day, it's your sloping site and it's your vision and it's your home. And that team of people, even including the council, will need to be on board to achieve your vision. And so it's your job to be the go between the builder and the designer 
Everyone loves a bonus tip. So number four is be flexible. I remember early on I had locked in a design on the section nobody wanted and then I found out that a tree at the back that I thought was reasonably little and okay to chop down was actually protected. And this is a protected totra. The um, netting around the outside is what's called a tree protection zone. So that's all about looking after the roots and we can't work in there or even store materials. That's the tree there. It meant that I couldn't put my garage where I wanted and we had to like essentially flip the whole design. In the end I've come up with something that I'm happy about but there's always going to be unknowns or changes or when you model it up in the computer it's not quite working the way you want. I think you've got to have a vision of what you're trying to achieve and then be flexible to move things around to make that vision come to life. Part of that being flexible is working out your key goals what are your like non-negotiables or what are you trying to achieve like it must have three bedrooms or I really want to capture the view of this over here work out those things and then make everything else fit around it